Okay, doing your self-portrait, you're gonna use two materials. You're gonna use a watercolor marker and um, a ballpoint pen. So the watercolor marker is good because um, if you make a mistake, you just wash it off. This one is supposed to be orange, but it looks brown, so that's why I'm using this one, because I'm gonna, someone else might not want to put this brownish orange on their paper. So you wanna use as much space as you possibly can for your face and your shoulders. This is not a full body portrait. It is just um, a portrait, self-portrait is really almost always just a head and shoulders. So you can start with an entire oval or you could start with just a half oval. This one, this way is a little easier because sometimes you can do your hair later. Ears, and then you figure out the top of your head you might have bangs. And if you have long hair, sometimes they cover the ears or sometimes you have it like tucked behind your ear. You might wanna practice drawing your hair on a scrap piece of paper before you get, to get started. Okay, so I have my hair, actually my bangs are a little longer. So your eyes usually sit right at the top of your ears. Um, most are oval shaped. Sometimes they're more football shaped. Mine are more football shaped. And one includes include a pupil or a reflection. You can, it's kind of hard with this marker, but you can add that with your next tool. Eyelashes, both males and females have eyelashes um, to keep dirt out of your eyes and everyone has eyebrows. So you can make them short or long, depending on your person. Look at yourself, nose and mouth. Everybody has lips, include your lips. And if you're like me, I have some freckles. I'm not gonna do all of them because I would have hundreds and hundreds on my face. So there I go, shoulders, neckline. For interest, you might wanna add a design or words on your shirt. If you do add words, you have to write them backwards because this is a reverse image when you print. So um, be careful when you're writing any words or numbers. All right, I'm gonna try to put be kind on my shirt. We'll see if it turns out. <laughs> if I don't like it, I can always just totally run this over water and it'll just rinse off and you can start again. I've had lots of experience with block letters. If you are new to block letters, you might want to practice a little before you start. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of texture in my background just to give it interest. That is not necessary, that is artist choice. Okay. So once you have this the way you want it, you are going to trace over with your ink pen. So you're going over your lines and you wanna put enough pressure that um, it's creasing the foam, but not so much pressure that it rips the foam. These are very fragile and delicate, so you don't want to rip it as you're working on it. You can always make changes with the pen because this is going to be the indentations. There's a fly, another art fly bothering me as I am working. Look at him. Like, hey, you just had a piece of pizza. 
I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to sit through watching me draw slowly. Um, but I'm trying to cover each of the lines I made with the watercolor marker. And we'll see when I'm done. Once I have finished tracing all of my lines, I'm going to wash my print underwater and then dry it off. Here is an oops that I did. I missed an eyeball and I kind of missed my chin. So that's one nice thing about using that marker. You wipe it off and you can see the things that you missed. And you'll probably want to go over it one more time just so you get those nice dents. Again, you don't want to push so hard that you rip it. It is possible to tape the back if you do rip it, but um, it would be better if you just are very careful when you're creating. Missed hair up here. Missed that. Kind of want to put a little dark in my ears. Okay, so you set up your print station, you're gonna have your messy mat, and you're gonna have this piece of metal. It has two bent edges, and that is to hold it against the side of the table. And then you're gonna put your, put your ink on the metal plate. Okay, so I have about a quarter size, and this is a brayer, and it's really smooth, and you don't wanna make any marks in it to damage it. And it is used to spread the ink. And that wasn't enough. So I set it upside down. spread that. So now I probably have too much, but you just try to spread it around. Got a chunk right there in the middle and a chunk right there too. So we kind of have to watch those. Okay, looks good. Leave it upside down. Okay, so here is my portrait, um, and I'm going to use the brayer to pick up the ink, and then I'm going to lightly put the ink onto the piece. You're gonna end up with a little bit of ink on your fingers. You don't wanna press so hard that you fill in those grooves. Your goal is just to get it on the flat, part of your piece. So once you feel like you have that done, we're going to actually move this over and do the next step on the table. After I completed my inking the foam plate, I went and washed my hands and I moved that foam plate to another messy mat where I laid it down and got another piece of the black paper and kind of set it over a top and then start massaging it. You want to give it a good rub to get all that ink um, imprinted onto the black piece of paper and then when you've done it for, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 seconds, you're going to very gently flip it over and peel the foam print off. If you do it nice and slow, you shouldn't have any bending of your foam print because ink is kind of sticky. And voila, you have your piece. Okay, your last step is using a white or silver colored pencil. Sign your name and put your teacher code at the bottom. There you go. 
we are gonna end up coloring these with oil pastels. So you're gonna wanna wash this off when you're done.